we've taken you on a hardware tour and we've shown you how it stacks up against the Galaxy S3, so the next logical step was to use it as our daily driver for a weekend. Right? I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Galaxy Camera as Daily Driver, a weekend experiment. Now, before you say anything, no, this wasn't just a stunt. We really wanted to find out if the Galaxy camera, which runs the full version of Android and packs a cellular radio, could substitute as a daily driver for some people, specifically shutterbugs, who don't make a lot of phone calls but do communicate in other ways, like via social media and texting. It's similar to the question that came up when tablets first became popular. Could I carry this instead of a phone, or in addition to something like a dumb phone? Is that possible? Is it workable? Is it practical? With the Galaxy camera, in this use case it admittedly wasn't designed for, the answer is yes, it's possible to use as a daily driver. No, it's not practical, but it's not that far off the mark. I took it for a spin as my daily driver for a weekend on AT&T here in the Boston area, and I came away with these pluses and minuses. First things first, you can't use the Galaxy camera as a phone in the traditional sense because there's no earpiece and the mic isn't in the right place. Furthermore, there's no phone application in the Jelly Bean build that ships with the camera. But you can use the speakerphone to make and take calls, and Skype works just fine in that regard, with and without video. In video calling mode, the primary shooter is used as there's no front-facing camera. Though the camera has a phone number assigned to it, it's not possible to make calls to or send texts to the device in the customary way. But once again, third-party apps like Google Voice work just fine for this purpose, and Samsung also bundles their own chat-on app for messaging. Of course, since this is an Android device, you can download nearly any messaging solution you like. Facebook Messenger and Gtalk performed very well during our time with the camera. That's a recurring theme with the Galaxy camera. If it doesn't come with the functionality you need out of the box, you can download it from the Play Store in most instances, thanks to its nature as a fully-fledged Android device. I was able to get my home screens lined up in my preferred order with HD widgets and transit titles, games, calendars, and even Spotify. It was a strange but fun experience to blast pinback from my camera. This being the AT&T version of the device, I was confined to HSPA, but data speeds and reception were quite good. And of course, shots taken with the camera's 16-megapixel sensor outclassed what's possible with most smartphone shooters. Having the option to upload directly to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram without bothering with finding a Wi-Fi hotspot was really nice. Nothing new for smartphones, of course, but a convenient novelty on something called a camera. Unfortunately, that comes with some compromises, as you might expect. This being a camera, it's big and bulky compared to most smartphones. As I mentioned in the Galaxy S3 comparison, while portrait use is possible, it's not preferable because of the awkward way it sits in the hand. Landscape, dual-handed use is preferred. Again, no surprise there. Even for a camera, though, it's big. This is not a pocketable device because of that massive optical zoom machinery. What was a surprise was the size of the battery included in the Galaxy camera, only 1,650 milliamp hours, and that limitation was really apparent. I don't know why Samsung couldn't find a way to include a beefier battery in this big hardware. It was easy to go from a full charge to a depleted cell in just over half a day, with heavy usage. Now, once again, that's usage as a smartphone substitute, not as a camera, so it won't affect you if you're using the device for its intended purpose, but it was still quite disappointing for such a big and heavy device to die so quickly. Samsung's taken some steps to squeeze as much endurance as possible from the camera, and that's resulted in some odd behavior. There's an auto power off that you can optimize in the settings menu, but the device also goes into a kind of a deep standby at times that prevents it from receiving timely notifications. Almost all of my email, text, and Gtalk alerts were delayed significantly during my time with the unit in standby, which says to me that Samsung has tweaked the unit's listening settings when the screen is off. I was also surprised by how much lag there was in daily use. I thought with the same quad-core Exynos processor as the Galaxy S3, this thing should be screaming, particularly with Project Butter enhancements. It felt a lot like the unit's CPU had been downclocked, and I was confused until I discovered that the power-saving feature was on. I'm not sure if this happened out of the box or if this is something I did and then forgot, but you'll want to check that setting if you're feeling a lot of lag on your Galaxy camera, because it absolutely does limit the CPU's efficiency in the name of battery life, leading to a less-than-ideal software experience. 
Taking the Galaxy camera around town as my smartphone replacement was, as you might expect, again, a study in compromise. While it bore all the challenges that come with using a device in a manner not intended, it actually shined by virtue of including the full suite of enhancements that any high-end Android device offers in 2013. But at $499.99, this is no impulse purchase or trivial investment. While I like it a lot, and it's a very capable camera, I'd wait for the next generation, hopefully with slimmer hardware and a beefier battery, to give this the full thumbs up for data-centric shutterbugs looking to replace their smartphone. That's going to do it for Galaxy Camera as Daily Driver, a weekend experiment. Thank you for watching. If you have something to say, please leave a comment on the post at pocketnow.com, where there's a few more observations in print form alongside this video. If you like us here on YouTube, please leave us a thumbs up here. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss anything. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. You can also follow me at Captain Two Phones. That's Captain the number two phones. We also discuss the Galaxy Camera and other Android, Windows Phone, and iOS devices on the Pocket Now Weekly podcast every week. Be sure and check that out. Our own Jaime Rivera discusses discusses these devices and more on the daily Pocket Now Daily broadcast. And as always, there is new editorial and video content of all sorts at pocketnow.com. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.